Hello everyone, it is me, Amaya, and that's right, we are doing another book read aloud. Da -da -da! Winter According to Humphrey. So this is technically winter now. I thought it would be a good book. Yes, it is a chapter book, and it has like 60 chapters, so we're going to have this for book for a little while. So let's go ahead and begin. I hope you enjoy Winter According to Humphrey. Number one, chapter number one, what a lark. Humphrey, where are you? A voice called out. I wasn't sure where I was because I was sound asleep in my cage until I heard that voice. My cage is a wonderful world to itself. I have everything a hamster needs. So Humphrey is the hamster. A wheel to spin on, a sleeping hut, a climbing ladder, food, water, a mirror tree, a mirror, tree branches, and a corn just for my poo. And that, of course, isn't near my food, water, or sleeping hut. And my bedding is, is quite a lovely quilt that keeps me warm in room 26. Humphrey's in the classroom hamster, so he's in room 26. I poke my head out of the bedding. Oh, so that's where you were hiding, Miss Brisbane. My teacher leaned down to look into my cage. I do like to play hide and squeak at times. But all I think about this morning was keeping warm. During the winter, I long fell school. They turned the heat down at night and then turned it up in the morning. Brr, it's chilly, Miss McRae said. She was wearing her heavy coat and her woolly cap. I hope the heat goes on soon. Yes, 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 I agreed. But since I'm a hamster and she's a human, all she heard was squeak, squeak, squeak. Boing, boing, my neighbor Og said. He's the other classroom pet in room 26. He makes strange twanging sounds. He can't help it. He's a frog. So the frog on this cover, that's Og. Morning, Og, Miss Mistrain said, taking off her cap. Winter's definitely here. Soon my classmates begin to arrive. They're all wearing heavy coats and hats, scarves, and gloves. Hi, Humphrey Mumphy, Mumphrey. Slow down Simon's shout as he ran, ran into the room. He's been calling me that ever since we played a funny name game. I like my nickname. Hi, Augie Moggy. Be careful, Kelsey called out. She passed by Og's cake. Boing, Og replied. Rosie rolled to the classroom in her wheelchair. She had a bright red cap and a bright red nose. It's cold out there, she announced. It's freezing out there. It's 20 below zero, Thomas T. True says as he entered. Just the thought of 20 below zero made me shiver and quiver. I was about to dive in my bedding again when Miss Bridge Spring corrected him. Thomas is actually 25 degrees above zero. Just cold, but not quite freezing. Thankfully, it is freezing because 32 is like 32 below is freezing. Now, hang up your jacket. The students who the students who are already hung up their coats stood around talking. We teach you the present I made you. Her, I heard helpful Holly tell Kelsey, "You'll love it." What is it? Kelsey asked. It's a special surprise. Holly said. Kelsey smiled. Great. Holly turned to Tall Paul, who was staying behind her. I'm making you a special present, too, she told him. Tell him tell Paul was puzzled. Why? he asked. Because you're my friend, Holly said. You, too, she told Small Paul, who was sitting next to Tall Paul. The two Pauls exchanged puzzled looks. Then Holly came over to my cage. Don't worry, Humphrey, she said. I'm, I'll, meet, uh, I'll make a present for you, too. That's unsqueakily nice for you. A uh, nice of you, I replied. My squeaks made her giggle. She's your dog's tank. I have a great idea for your present, Og. Boing, boing, Og twain happily. I got a big list of things to make, Holly said. It's a lot of work. I even sneaked out my bed last night and worked on my desk with a flashlight. That's the only way to get them all done. Now, that's not really good if you're not getting enough sleep. I wanted to get a present from Holly, but I didn't want her to go without sleep to make it. Exactly. The bell rang and Holly rushed to her table. Hurry up, Carrie arrived just as the bell stopped ringing. But at least he made on time. Class, as you can tell by the weather, winter is here. Miss Miss Rain now says she took attendance. So that means, and that means we're going to be busy practicing. We do? I asked. I know I'm supposed to raise my paw before squeaking, but it slipped out. This year, Longfellow School is putting on a show to celebrate the winter holidays. It's called Winter Wonderland. That sounds pretty cool. I want to. I want to be at a Winter Wonderland. Leave a like if you want to be in a winter wonderland. Each class will do a special performance that has to do with winter, she explains. It takes place in the evening 
before our winter break, and your friends and family are all invited. So my friends went, ooh, so my friends went, ah, Thomas T. And Thomas T. True said, all right. I said, squeak, because when you celebrate something, it's usually fun. Miss Lark will be will be in later in the morning to tell you about the, your part in the program, Miss Richmond said. I've heard of Miss Lark, the music teacher. Sometimes the rest of the class goes to her room, but Og and I stay behind. My friends always come back humming. Miss Richmond changed the subject and packed out sheets of math problems. I, on the other paw, couldn't, couldn't, kept thinking about the winter program. I know it could be cold, 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 but it could be pretty when it snows. But what on earth is a wonderland? I wondered what it would be like all through math class. When Miss Brisbane is cleaning the floor, a door opened, and a woman who almost looked like a student, so saying she's short, with slim curly brown hair, and was shorter than, tall, than my tallest classmate, Paul Green. I call it Tall Paul. He had a bit, she had a big smile on her face and carried a stack of paper. Hello, Miss Lark, Miss Richardson greeted her. We finished math class and are ready to hear about the show. I scrolled to my team, Rich. Yes! Tell us now! Tell me, Miss Lark froze. So, like, she's not actually frozen like I, but she, like, like, she doesn't move. She's not doing anything. She's just, like, staring. What's that noise? She asked. Oh, that's our classroom hamster, Humphrey, Miss Richardson said. I think I want to say hello to you. Would you like to come meet him? Some of my friends laughed, but Miss Lark didn't. She stared at my cage. My, she stared in the direction of my cage. I think she shivered. She's like, so it seems like she's kind of scared of a hamster. I mean, hamsters are super cute. I don't know why she would be scared, but maybe we'll find out. Miss Ruby walked towards my cage, but Miss Lark didn't follow. In fact, she took a step back, like she's at the doorway. Like she's shivering, she just took a step back. The dog said, Boing! Miss Lark backed up again. What was that? That dog the frog, Huffle Holly said. The music teacher's eyes grew wide and her voice sounded, and her voice sounded strange. And she said, You have a lot of animals in the class. And she said, I have a lot of animals in this class. Seems like she's scared of animals. Miss Brisbane chuckled. Yes, but they're not only cage of tanks. The rest of the class laughed. Miss Lark didn't even smile. Ooh, seems like she does not like pets that much. Especially, um, hamsters and frogs. She kept staring in the direction of my cage until Miss Brayfrey said, We're excited to hear about the winter program. Why don't you tell us about it? At last, Miss Lark smiled and moved to the front of the classroom. It's going to be an exciting celebration of everything the season has to offer. And I think Room 26 has the best part in the show. It's not for a small, excitable creep. It's not for a small, excited creature like me not to squeak up when I hear something wonderful. But I managed to stay silent. I'll splash around his tank. I guess it was hard for him to stay silent, too. You're clapping before me two songs. There will be swirly snowflakes and prancy horns and jingle bells. Miss Lark's eyes, excuse me, sparkled. Oh, I love horns and bells, I heard Sophie said. Then she turned to Kelsey, who was right next to her, and started to tell her Sophie. Stop talking, Sophie, Miss Richie said. Sophie said she was sorry. I think she meant it. Rosie raised her hand. Will there be real horses, she asked? No, Miss Lark said. But there will be prancy, dancy, and singing, and ringing. I don't think you want real horses on that show. I don't think that's going to go well. All my classmates were excited to hear her answer. Yippee, I squeaked. But I didn't mean to. It slipped out. So I just sparkled out of Miss Lark's eyes. The hamster has to get out, she asked. Sometimes, Miss Richie really says. When he rose in his ha- around his hamster ball. This time, Miss Lark definitely shivered. But so she was like shaking. And it wasn't even cold anymore. Could you could you explain how we're going to prepare for our musical numbers? Mr. Spray asked. We'll be rehearsing in here, Miss Lark said. I mean, if she doesn't really like animals, would she go to the music room? I think, that, I think if I was kind of scared of the animals, I would probably go to the music room and say we're performing at that. The music room is going to be used to store the scenery for the show. She started talking about schedules and rehearsals and costumes. My friends are especially excited about the costume. Some of you will be floating snowflakes, Miss Lark exclaimed, and some of you will be jingle bell horses. There's a lot of mummery in the classroom. I'll splash a little louder. I'll be sending a letter home to your parents, Miss Frank said. Now, let me say this will be a lot of work, and I want to make sure you're all prepared to do your best. I will, 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 I squeaked, but luckily I didn't think Miss Lug heard me because all my friends were talking to. 
quiet, please, Mr. Lex said. Once everyone quieted down, she added, It will be work, but it will be fun, and I know it will be wonderful. Now, I'm sure you know the song Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, go all the way. But there will be a brand new Snowflake song, too. I wrote it myself, and I brought copies for you. Uncle Holly jumped up. I'll pass them out. Miss Lark gave her the papers, and Holly made sure all of her friends had one. All her friends except Og and me. I'll be working on. I'll be working with you on the melody, Miss Lark explained. And one more thing: Does anyone in this class know how to play the piano? Do it now, Daniel's. Where? Do it now, Daniel's. Hand went up. I do, he said. I take lessons. Great, Miss Lark said. Would you like to play for the performance? Sure, he said. I'll play. I'll play the new song, and I'll, play, and I'll have you play Jingle Bells. I'll get the music so you can practice, she said. Be careful, Kelsey, hail it up. I take ballet lessons. I already knew that, I must say. Kelsey's a little more careful since she started ballet. That will be a big help, Miss Lark said. Come and hail it up next. I play musical instruments. Miss Lark didn't look too confident. Tell the truth, Thomas, she said. I, Thomas sometimes stretches the two, truth a little. I do, he insisted. He probably just let begin to whistle. There are seven things that humans can do that I wish a hamsters could do. Whistling is one of them. Miss Lark and Miss Ridgeway both laughed. That's not a music that's not a musical instrument, Miss Ridgeway said. Sure it is, Thomas says. My mouth. I think we need a mouth for singing, Miss Lark said. Soon the bell rang for racing, my friends ran to get their coats. Stay by up, Miss Ridgeway told them. It's cold out there. I'm surprised she's letting them go but um when it's which is technically below freezing, because if I, because my teacher wouldn't let me, like if it's below, like 32 below, we can't go outside for recess. Miss Miss Ray walked the door, walked towards the door with Miss Lark. It will be hard work, but I know the children will love the program, Miss Miss Ray said. I can see it now. Miss Lark had a sparkle back. A real winter wonderland. As she left, Miss Miss Ray over, Miss Ray came over to see all of me. You know, I don't think Miss Lark's like, animals very much, she said. I feel sorry for her. Poor Miss Lark. I feel sorry for her, too. She doesn't know what she's missing. Humphrey's winter wonderings. I wonder how an intelligent human could not like a handsome ha- hamster with, wa- with long whiskers and golden fur. And that's the end of this chapter. So, so far, so, that was chapter one. I hope you are enjoying so far. If you want to see Chapter 2 or Part 2, whatever you want to call it, leave a like and subscribe to A Mice Playtime. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody, and have a great winter.